crushes. Um, this subject is one that's been a, a bit of a bone of contention between me and other artists, shall we say, um, for many years now. And it, it's one that I'm, I'm very passionate about, okay? Because quite frankly, no one can actually come up with a good enough argument to make me change my viewpoint on this. Um, the, to, the traditionalists and their brethren will expend their, their very last dying breath, you know, telling you that you must, must, must have Kolinsky sable brushes, you know, to, to produce anything that resembles a, a watercolour of any merit, okay? Um, th this, quite frankly, as far as I'm concerned, is absolute bollocks, yeah? Pardon the language, but it is. It's absolute nonsense. Um, sable brushes, for one, they're, they're extortionately expensive. And, and the only person who really gains, you know, um, when you go out and splash your life savings on a set of brand new sable brushes, is the guy who runs the art shop, okay? Yeah, not you. So why do people do it? The reason the traditionalists give, little bit, can't get me worse on today, the reason the traditionalists give an explanation for this madness, basically, is that they come to a fantastic point and they retain lots of water and pigment because of the properties of the natural hair. Okay, right, so let's take point one. No pun intended, okay? Um, maybe they do have a fantastic point in them. But what the traditionalists forget to mention is that natural hair, especially sable, is very soft, okay? Which means that the lovely, delicate point that you encounter when you first pick up the brush, well, it's not gonna stay like that for very long, okay? Um, give it a couple of months if you paint with any degree of you know regularity, those lovely points will have worn away. And unlike a pencil, you can't sharpen a brush, can you, okay? So, you'll have to go and buy some more. Or inevitably what actually happens is because you've worn away the point on the, the decent sized brush you had, the only decent sized brush you might add, um, you basically switch down the size to the next one that actually has a point still on it. And therein spells the doom, you know, that's where the doom starts. Um, which I'll explain in a second. Now, to the other point, that natural fibres um, like sable hold a fantastic amount of moisture and you know it makes them perfect watercolour yes they do indeed you know I won't disagree with that however the advancements that have been made with synthetic fibres nowadays means that any synthetic brush will do exactly the same okay and synthetic brushes are infinitely cheaper than a set of sables okay and, and that said, it still doesn't explain why we need to splash out for sables anyway, as there are actually other natural hairs out there that will give you the same qualities at a much lower price point. I mean, take squirrel, for example, squirrel hair. Yeah, these big mops that you get, um, like this, yeah? That's a squirrel hair. I apply water to that and I'll get a fantastic point in it, and this will hold water, you know, until the cows come home, okay? And I might add it's much cheaper than a sable. Okay, so the, the argument that people give for going out and buying sable brushes, Kalinsky sable, I might add, is, is just absolute nonsense, okay? So take that and stuff it up your Kalinsky lined <laughs> Excuse me. I want one today. Um, another thing I see that gives me cause for concern is the fact that Every watercolour starter kit that you see, you know, has at least one paintbrush in it. Sounds like a strange thing to complain about. What it basically is, the problem with this is that it's usually a tiny one, okay? Um, something I keep reiterating at the demos and workshops that I produce, that I provide, are that tiny brushes are not really going to help you when it comes to watercolour, okay? But think about the name of the medium. Yeah, it's called water color. Okay, there's the clue. Water color. What's the first word? And you know, the most important factor. That's right, water. Now, 
Let's take this brush, for example, yeah, which is representative of the type and the size of brush that you'll find in, in one of these starter kits, okay? Now, let's compare it to this one, which is one that I use. This is my workhorse brush, okay? This is the one that I use for probably 80% of my painting. Now, which of these two brushes do you think will hold the most amount of water? This one? Or this one? This one, obviously. So, bear in mind the name of the medium, water, color. Which brush do you think is going to be best for water, color? This one, obviously. Yeah, it's just a given. Um, but they still insist on putting little tiny brushes like this in the sets. Tiny brushes hold a tiny amount of water, which means that they're practically useless for painting a watercolor. Except for maybe adding in those, you know, those final little details at the end. The problem is no one tells you this. You know, when you pick up your kit, so you, you soldier on thinking that it's, it's not working out very well for you because you're doing something wrong. Well, you are. <laughs> you're using the tiny brush that they provided you in the kit. Okay, it's not your fault that you're doing that if you don't know any better. Um, it's their fault for putting it in the first place and instead of su supplying you with a decent sized brush to begin with, okay? Now, incidentally, the reason they include those brushes in the starter kits is to hopefully force you to go out and buy lots more brushes, okay? And you have to remember that the companies who make these kits have only one aim, and that is to sell you more stuff, okay? They don't care if you get good. I keep telling people this, our supplies companies do not care if you get good, okay? They don't want you to get good, they want you to buy more stuff. And if you think that there's a carrot at the end of the stake that will magically make it all work for you, then you're gonna keep buying more stuff, aren't you? See how it works, yeah? Um, and unfortunately what happens is that that's exactly what most students do. They read the books, they watch the DVDs, then they go out and they buy a full set of Kalinsky table brushes that contains every size from tiny, 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 all the way up to maybe a size 12 or a 14 if you're lucky, which I might add is still not big enough to work at a large scale, okay? Um, so, what do you actually need, yeah? Because I'm pretty sure there's been a few divorces you know, over what has been spent on these sable brushes when the credit card bill hit them at the following month. Okay, so I don't want that for you. What do, what do you actually need? Well, I've bought literally hundreds of brushes in my time as an artist, okay? Literally, hundreds. And I've made all the mistakes, okay? I, I've, I even have the obligatory full set of Kalinsky sable brushes in the studio that we talked about before, which I might add, I spent an absolute fortune on and now never ever use. Interesting that, isn't it? Yeah, these brushes that are supposed to be the fundamental, um, you know, root of watercolor, I never use them because they don't do what I want them to do, okay? Um, so, let's try and ensure that you don't make the same mistakes as I did and hopefully save yourself a few quid into the bargain. Sound good? Excellent. Right, I'm going to show you the brushes that I use now and I'm going to explain my choices as we go. Okay, so here we go. These are the brushes that I use now. Um, I don't use an obscene amount of brushes, I might add. I have two squirrel hair brushes. Uh, there's a large one and a smaller one. Now, I have to admit, this is the one that I use more because I use it for... Um, adding detail to clouds more than anything. It holds a massive amount of water, and as I said before, it's actually got a really good tip in it as well, you know? Um, so, again, another another nail in the coffin of the Kalinsky Sableists. Um, another brush I use is, a, um, this is actually Sable Blend, this one, okay? This is a sword liner. Um, now, don't, don't ever do that to your brushes, by the way. Okay, the reason I've done this is just so I can show you the shape here. You see that? 
So we've got a nice really sharp point in there, it tapers to a really sharp point. These are fantastic for doing trees, um, fine the grasses, that sort of stuff. Anything it requires a, a line, a fine line. But the good thing about this, rather than a rigger brush, is that it tapers to this point, okay? So depending on how much pressure you put on the brush, uh, you can taper the line from a thick line to a thin line, okay? So the traditional way of painting um, branches, for example, you would have three or four different brushes. You would start off a thick brush for the trunk and then a, a smaller brush for the, the, you know, the branches and then a smaller brush again uh, as the branches get smaller and then a smaller brush again for the fine, fine twigs at the end. You can do all of that with this, okay? So there you go, that's three brushes you don't need to buy now. Um, next brush you use, I've got a little half inch flat. Uh, this is just a, a nylon brush, okay? Nothing, nothing fancy, nothing expensive, just a nylon brush for any sort of square details I need. So if I'm putting in, um, let's say a chimney pot or something like that in the house, I would use this because it gives me a nice square edge to work to. Um, I have two rounds. These are, this is a hog hair, a hog bristle brush, okay? Not, not a brush that you'd usually use for watercolour, I might add, okay? Hog hair is usually used for acrylics and oils. Um, I use this for mixing colour and I use it for scrubbing out as well mainly. Okay, um, it's got the bristles because they've got you know a nice bounce in them. Um, they will allow me to scrub colour out quite easily and move it about the paper, which allows you to achieve the textures that you see in my paintings. Okay, this this is the the thing that does it. This hog hair brush. This is uh, made up from uh, nylon fibre. It's um, it's called a snowdrop actually, and. This basically is the one that I would use for very final details. So this doesn't actually come out of the bag until probably the last two minutes of the painting. And this is the sort of brush that I would use to put in, you know, those little fine uh, boards and little figures in the distance that you see in my paintings. This is the brush that I would use to do that. Okay. Right. Next one. We have one of these. A toothbrush. I know. This toothbrush gets hammered, okay? Um, I, I sometimes get asked what brand it is, it's a wisdom, okay? Just in case you wanna know, because you need it to be a particular shape, really. Um, you, you don't want the ones that are sort of triangular at the end. They, they don't work as well. You need something that's a little bit more full-bodied. I know, discussing toothbrushes, it's ridiculous, isn't it? But toothbrush is a fantastic tool. I will show you how to use this as we go through the program. And um, you know, it's it's a really important part of my kit. I use this a lot. Um, you just need to make sure you don't get it mixed up with the one you use for your teeth, yeah? <laughs> and finally, my favorite brush. This is a two inch uh, nylon blend, okay? Flat. Now this is the brush that I use to probably produce about 80 to 85% of the work that you see in my paintings, okay? So 85 to 90% of this painting was painted using that brush only. Yeah, let that sink in for a bit. That brush only, that's all you need. Before I would switch down, you know, to maybe something like this and add in the final details. Or maybe something like this to put in those, those trees here, that sort of idea, okay? Everything else though, that brush. So if, if your skin, and you can't afford to go and buy a lot of brushes, okay? Buy one of these and a small detailer and, and that will do you, that will suffice, okay? However, that said, you know, if you can, that's what you need. It's not an obscene amount of brushes, is it, okay? I see people sitting with, you know, pots and pots of brushes on their, their studio desk and think, what on earth do you use all those brushes for, okay? Every single one of these brushes has a purpose and they don't get used otherwise, okay? Um, I have probably another 50 or 60 brushes sitting in the studio currently that never ever get used, ever, because I don't need them, okay? I just won't throw them away because I'm Scottish and I'm a bit tight that way. <laughs> I don't like throwing things away that, you know, um, unless I really need to. Okay, so that's the brushes that I use. Now, 
Now you've seen the brushes they use, I might add that what I spent to purchase all the brushes that you just seen was much less than what I spent on that set of sable brushes that we mentioned earlier. Okay, much, much less. Because most of those are a, a blend of synthetics. Synthetic brushes will hold, you know, a, a decent amount of water, which means you're not going to run out of water across the painting, um, but they will also retain their point for much, much longer because obviously the bristles are a little bit more hard wearing. And that's the important thing. When you're going to be adding stuff to watercolours, you need a good point on your brushes. It's very, very, very important. A good point or a good edge. You know, one of the, the two. And every single brush that I use provides me with that. Um, now the brushes that I use are bought from a company in Yorkshire, in the UK, called Rosemary Brush Company. I cannot recommend them highly enough, okay? Uh, they hand make all their brushes and they only deal directly with artists, okay? You can't go to the big art supplies manufacturers websites and buy these brushes. You can only get them directly from Rosemary or from people who me who are officially allowed to, you know, um, sell their brushes because we use them, you know? Um, that set of brushes you've just seen, Rosemary, you know, is quite happy for me to sell. But you can't buy them from our supplies websites. That's why she manages to keep the price down, okay? I'll give you an example, right? If you take this square away brush here, this is a size 14 with Rosemary. Um, if you bought the same sort of size from Da Vinci, as in the same diameter, Okay, I don't know what the actual size is of a Da Vinci because it varies to, between brands. Uh, sometimes actually just to confuse the issue, it varies between the same brand as well. Okay, so a size 14 with this, where rosemary might be a different with a different type of brush. Does that, that make sense? Yeah? Um, but anyway, back to the point. This is a size 14 um, and this will cost you roughly £50, you know, just over £50. If you bought the same brush from a company like Da Vinci, this would cost you well over a hundred pounds. Massive, massive difference, okay? And there's no need for it, it's exactly the same stuff. The brush is made in the same way. In fact, you know, it's probably made better with Rosemary because there's better quality control. They're not mass producing this stuff, okay? So, Rosemary Brush Company in Yorkshire. If you're gonna get brushes, get them from her. Or, or get, you know, these brushes from me, whichever. Um, it'll save you a fortune. <laughs> it's all I'm gonna say on that. So I hope you've enjoyed my ramblings. <laughs> um, that's it for this little series of videos. Um, I hope you've picked up some pointers that will help you with your kit choices. If you make the right choices now, it's gonna make the process of painting your way to watercolor mastery just so much easier and so much faster. You know, I kid you not. Um, I've met so many people over the years that have struggled needlessly with watercolour. And very often all it boiled down to was just, you know, they, they didn't have the right tools for the job. They had the wrong tools for the job. Okay? So hopefully you're now in a position where you won't make that mistake. Um, I've had to learn the hard way myself. Uh, I've, it's been costly, it's been time consuming. And I really don't want that for you, okay? So, take the advice. Don't take the advice, you know? I, I really don't care which. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully you do take the advice, you know? Because um, I'm hoping you'll find some of this helpful. Um, I, if you're part of the Watercolor Mastery Program, I will see you in the next video where we're actually going to get down to using this kit now and, uh, you know, get to the good stuff. So, if you're in the program, I'll see you in the next video. If you're not in the program, why not? Why not? Go and join, yeah? There'll be a button somewhere on this page. Go and join the program. And I will see you in the next video as well, okay? Right, so, see you next time. Bye now.